Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Jesus Christ, our Lord, you filled the hills of Judea with joy at the wondrous birth of John. Fill us with joy as we celebrate his birth. May we hear your voice proclaim the good news of your coming and do your will. We cry out with Zechariah, Blessed be the Lord God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Son, the eternal Word, and the radiance of the Father, who before he took flesh and became man, sent John to prepare his way. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives, and forever. Today we sing praise to you, O John, messenger, forerunner, and baptizer, saying, You are the child whose birth was announced by an angel sent by God. You are the voice crying out in the wilderness, and the prophet to whom the mystery of the Lord was revealed, while still in your mother's womb. You are the covenant linking the two covenants, for you brought the old to an end and began the new. You are great among the children of women, and you came to tell us of the Most High. You are a sign of God's mercy and an apostle of the King of Peace. You are the star who guides us to the true light coming into the world, and you give light to churches, monasteries, and convents. Now, O prophet of the Most High, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to obtain the miraculous grace of Christ for us, so that our souls may be adored with good works as we witness to the true faith. With Zachariah, your father, and with Elizabeth, your mother, we glorify the Father who sent you. We worship the Son whom you long to see while you were still in the womb. And we give thanks to the Spirit who sanctified you before you were born. To the most holy Trinity be glory and thanks now and forever.
Lord Jesus, extend your holy right hand upon your faithful people and bless your flock. Accept this incense that we have offered to you on this feast of the birth of John, the forerunner. Make us worthy to praise and to glorify you with spiritual hymns and to give thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Kaddishat, Aloha, Kaddishat, In the desert a voice cries, Come, prepare the way for God. Now these words find fulfillment on this day when John is born. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Tell me now, you who wish to be under the law, do you not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman and the other by the freeborn woman. The son of the slave woman was born naturally, according to the flesh. The son of the freeborn through a promise. Now this is an allegory. These women represent two covenants. One was from Mount Sinai, bearing children unto slavery. And this is Hagar. Hagar represents Sinai, a mountain in Arabia, and it corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery along with her children. But the Jerusalem above is freeborn, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, you barren who bore no children. Break forth and shout, you who were not in labor. For no more numerous are the children of the barren one than of her who has a husband. 
Now you, my brothers and sisters, like Isaac, are children of the promise. But just as then, the child of the flesh persecuted the child of the spirit, so it is now. But what was the scripture say? <clears throat> Drive out the slave woman and her son, for the son of the slave woman shall not share the inheritance with the son of the freeborn. Therefore, my brethren, we are children not of the slave woman, but of the freeborn. For freedom Christ has set us free, so stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Praise be to God always. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. <clears throat> From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, When the time had arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord has shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, there is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs asking his father what he wished to him to be called. And he asked for a tablet, and he wrote, John is his name. And everyone was amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. And everyone who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then shall this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. This is the truth, peace be with you.
For freedom, Christ has set us free. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So if we remember at the beginning of this letter to the Galatians, St. Paul is dealing with the converts in Galicia who are from a pagan background and who subsequently in contact with the other converts from Israel found these observances neat. And so they started picking up, pagans that they had been before with no connection with Israel, started picking up different ceremonial aspects, dietary laws, don't eat this, eat that. I suppose also doing Shabbat, do as the meals, who doesn't like little candles and some prayers, it's very beautiful. So they started picking up all these things. And he calls them stupid, he calls them fools at the beginning of this letter. That's why towards the end now, of course, what he does is he takes his allegory, it's the, again the Midrash. He's giving a commentary on the scriptures. So what St. Paul is doing is at this point saying, well, those of you who want to follow these observances of the old law, don't you listen to the law? Don't you know what's actually required of you? And then he goes on to give this commentary on the episode of Abraham's life, the Midrash. And what he says is that this is an allegory. These two women that are married to Abraham and of course, the basic catechesis, they will know this story. And what he says, of course, is Hagar. You have Hagar and Sarah. It's interesting, he never names Sarah. He just always calls her the freeborn woman. The woman of flesh, the fleshly child, the child of natural reasoning, Ishmael. That child, <coughs> excuse me, his mother is named Hagar. And of course, the tradition has always been that the Ishmaelites, the people born of Hagar, are actually the peoples that we call Arabs, the southern part of the Middle East. It's just the scriptural and the ancient tradition. But what St. Paul says is that these two women that are married to Abraham, the father of promise, the father of many nations, these women now take on a representation in the commentary of being their parable. They are an analogy. They are uh, an allegory. And the reason why he's comparing them is because Hagar is legitimately married to Abraham. Clearly, he's, he has affection and love for her. And he certainly loves his son that is born to her. But he says that, she, that that child is born of the flesh. And again, in St. Paul's terminology, the flesh doesn't mean that it's impure or bad. It means that it's just pure nature, naturalism. It's just a pure natural way of thinking. And of course, it was quite natural for Abraham and Sarah. At the time, she's the one who actually proposes, look, we're old. These promises have been made, but we are old and there are no children. And if you do not have a son, if you do not have a child, then the next one who inherits everything you have is your chief steward, your chief servant. That's just the tradition, the custom. And so she says, why don't you take one of the servant girls, take one of the girls, take one of my servant girls and have her as a wife and have a child. And again, there's nothing wrong with this. And it's completely logical, in fact, for a couple who have been sterile for decades. But it's what St. Paul calls the flesh. It is purely a human way of reasoning, merely a natural way of thinking. Again, it doesn't mean that in itself it's bad, but for Abraham, it's actually, in listening to his wife, is actually a capitulation. And there is an offense on the part of Abraham because Abraham has been told about the children, the nations, and all of this, these promises that have been given to him personally. There is an aspect, not of failure, but of not having lived fully according to the promises. We will know that he is aware of this because later on in the text, when God promises that there will be a child born, he immediately believes it. He immediately believes that his wife in a sterile marriage will have a child. Of course, this is about 10 years after the birth of the child of Hagar. And because, not only because she's a slave woman and becomes concubine, a second wife to Abraham, 
that the child who is born is purely according to this world. But he says the freeborn woman, Sarah, his cousin, in fact, is a cousin that he's married to, that she, being a free woman, she brings forth a child according to promise, not because of nature, not because of the flesh, because quite honestly, neither one of them. Abraham, by the time Isaac is born, Abraham is close to 100, and Sarah is 90. And so clearly, this is not the moment when you start having babies. But it is a child that has been promised. Abraham, when he hears before this conception, we all know of the story of the angels that come, the three men that come and visit, who announce and say again that your wife, next year when we come back, she will have a child. On that second occasion, she's the one who laughs. But the first one, Saint, uh, is Abraham already chuckles when he hears this promise before even receiving these men at his tent. And hence the child Ishak just means he laughs. It's a question of laughter. It's just what the name means. And so what you're doing is in this comparison between the two, he's saying that the child that is born is miraculous. It's just according to God's will that Isaac is born. Not according to the flesh, not according to human logic, in fact, it's all, as far as human beings would think, completely illogical. And so he takes these two women and the children that they bring into the world, and he gives them as an allegory. That Hagar, that world of the flesh and logical thinking and the way of doing stuff, he says, that's Mount Sinai, that's the law of Moses. There are observances you follow, you do your Shabbat meals, you circumcise your boys, you do these things, you don't eat your crustaceans, you don't, you do these different observances, but that is merely according to the flesh, and it will never purify the spirit, it will never heal the integrity of the human being. Hagar on the other side, he says, that is, so that is Sinai. On the other side is the freeborn woman whose child is the child of promise. And he says, she, she's the Jerusalem above. That's why you'll see references in the anaphora today that we'll use of the liturgy of St. James, of the references to Jerusalem, the references to the heavenly Jerusalem in the church of the firstborn. That is the illusion that St. Paul is talking about here, that Sarah represents the heavenly reality, God himself, the heavenly Jerusalem. And he says, then he quotes again from the text, and he says, rejoice you who are barren, you who have never been in labor, because your children will be more numerous than the woman who is married and who has children. So you have that brief little quotation at the end. And so what St. Paul says between the two of these is that what happens in this story? is that when this baby is born, the second son, when the baby is born, Hagar is now upset because she's no longer the number one, in a sense, the number one wife because she brought forth a child. Now the first wife has brought forth a child. And clearly that child is the one who is going to have the inheritance, or at least to be shared with the child who's physically the first one to be born, Ishmael. And he says, but what does the scripture tell us? Now, what is interesting in it is that he uses that as it was in those moments that the child born of the flesh persecuted the child of the promise. What he's doing is in the text, if you go back and read Genesis, that there is an episode probably when Ishmael is probably 10, 11, 12, and this little baby is born. You know, those of you who have had children, not every single child is thrilled when a new baby because they're being dethroned, especially the youngest in that family. So when the baby comes, they're not necessarily very happy. And then you get the classic cooing and petting the baby until they walk out of the room and then you smack the baby. And so this type of a thing of this like sibling rivalry, this sibling jealousy, it is exactly what is given in Genesis. That Ishmael, you can translate the Hebrew term as being playing roughly with, hurting, playing with, or 
in the sense of being on him, our word persecution. That is what St. Paul picks up by saying that as it was in those days that the child of the flesh persecuted the child of the promise, so it is today. In other words, he's making very clear reference that in the first generations, the Jews were very much the persecuting power. All of our movies and documentaries tell us the Jews have only been persecuted, but it's important to remember, and certainly at the beginning of the church, that the Jews were the ones who persecuted and who expelled the Christians from Jerusalem, caused them to flee because of the persecutions. That is what he's referring in this letter to people who are living in what is now modern day Turkey, that this is the same reality you know because you have refugees among you. And so he says, as it was in the days that the child of the flesh persecuted the child of the promise, so we live this reality today. That the children of the flesh persecute the children of the promise. And he says, what does scripture say? Cast out the slave woman and her son, which is what Genesis does say. Because that child will not be heir with the child of the, the son of the promise. And so what he's reminding the Galatians is you like these observances, but our observance is so much more profound now because of the fact that we are children of the heavenly Jerusalem. Our obligation is not to lighting candles at a Shabbat service or to following this or that observances or dietary laws. Our obligations are the virtues, faith, hope, charity, beauty, beauty, honor, nobility, all of these aspects, those are what we are bound to do. And that, that is never fully be able to be observed because our ultimate goal is to imitate Christ. And so he says, that is the freedom by which you have been made free. That is the liberty. You have been broken from the law of the flesh, not to do whatever you feel like, but in the freedom of Christ, which is to imitate the word incarnate and to have your lives transfigured and transformed to follow virtue. And so it's a very beautiful ending to this letter. And the reason why it's chosen, of course, is because John the Baptist being born, that we commemorate this week, John is the last of the Old Testament prophets. We don't usually think about that. We think of him as being a New Testament prophet, but he's not. He's an Old Testament prophet and he's the last of them and he's the greatest of them. And so John is the one, in fact, when you read the Husoyo, it says he is a covenant to himself that fulfills the old covenant, inaugurates the new, and what is that covenant? The kingdom. St. John, when he preaches at the, at the Jordan River, he says that the kingdom of God is at hand. This idea of the heavenly Jerusalem, the divine will which is manifested to us, the grace that liberates us, is meant to transfigure us to make us those children of the heavenly Jerusalem, the children of heaven, the children of the kingdom, and as St. Paul says also, and in the scriptures, the firstborn. These are the ones who receive these gifts. And so while there is great joy around this birth of John the Baptist, everyone is mystified by him because he's also born to a family that is barren and sterile. But they do know that in the mystery of this child's birth, that the hand of the Lord is with him. And so what we ask through the intercession of St. John is that he give us a profound appreciation of that freedom of Christ that has been given to each of us and also to come to the fulfillment, if you like, to recognize the hand of God that works in our lives in that freedom. And may his prayers then be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God Father of God, white and white, true God and true God, begotten and made, consubstantial to the Father. To him all things were made, for us our pain, for us our salvation. He came down to heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to her to bear, and he came in. For our saints he was crucified by the unconscious Pilate. He suffered the death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And see that the right of right and fall. He will call me in glory to judge the dead and the dead, and his kingdom will not have end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of who has served the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess in baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And the right of the world. <laughs> Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. We remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us. We recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Nicholas. Remember, O oh God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. 
Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the announcer of St. James the Apostle, brother of the Lord, on page 794. 794. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, lover of all people, though we are unworthy, make us worthy of salvation. Purified of deceit and hypocrisy, and united in the bond of love and peace. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, may we give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. Peace to you, o holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, o server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor, of love and faith that are pleasing to God. Merciful Lord, you dwell on high and look down upon the earth. Through the grace of your only Son, send your blessings upon those who bow before your holy altar. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. God the Father, in your love for all people, you sent your Son into the world to bring the lost sheep back to you. Do not turn your holy face away from us as we celebrate this spiritual and bloodless sacrifice. Relying on your mercy and through the grace of your only Son, we ask that this mystery instituted for our salvation not be for our condemnation. Rather, may it blot out all our sins, forgive our faults, and be an expression of our thanks for your goodness. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, 
now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. right and just to glorify you, bless you, praise you, adore you, and give you things, O maker of all things, visible and invisible, the highest heavens and all its powers, praise you, the sun, the moon, and all the stars, the earth, the seas, and in all that is in them, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. The angels, archangels, and how the heavenly hosts all sing, praising your majestic glory with triumphant hymns, with never-ending voices and with sweet acclamations. They cry out and they proclaim. of God, you are holy and almighty, the creator and the good one. You formed us from the dust of the earth and gave us the joys of paradise. When we had transgressed your commandment and fell, you did not abandon us, but like a good and merciful father, you instructed us. Through the law you call out to us, through the prophets you guided us, and at the appointed time you sent your son our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, into the world to renew your image. He came down and by the Holy Spirit became flesh of the holy and ever-Virgin Mary and dwelt among us, accomplishing all things for our salvation. Ansabe lachma bida kodi shoto u barahu kodesh waksoya bil talmida karomara sabahula mehne kulho hono denita fakhro Dachlo faikun wachlov sagie, meta chaseo meti hel. Husoyon chame wa hoye dan alam alami. Kanno alko so dum sich wo men hamro hu men mayo. Bara hu kodesh. Ya bel talmita koro mara. Sabeshtawa mehne kulho. Hono denita. 
Demo di la diati ki khadato Dakhlo faikun wakhlaf sagiye Ete sheru meti hel Pusoyon khame wa khoye dar khalam alameen Do this in memory of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and profess my resurrection until I come again. into heaven, you are sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your glory is second coming when you shall judge the world with justice and reward all people according to their deeds. Now we ask you, do not repay us according to our sins and transgressions, but in your compassion and love for all people, cleanse us of all our sins. We, your people, and your inheritance implore you, and through you, and with you, implore your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, O mighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. Descent, he may make this bread a life giving body, a saving body, a heavenly body, a body that redeems our souls and bodies, the body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of the new covenant, a life giving blood, a saving blood, a heavenly blood, a blood that redeems our souls and bodies, the blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the sanctification of the souls and bodies of those who share in them that they may excel in all good deeds. May they be for the strengthening of your holy church, which you have founded on the rock of faith, so that the gates of hell shall not prevail against her, delivering her from all heresies and doubts until the end of time and forever. We offer you, O Lord, this sacrifice for your holy church throughout the world and for the holy places that you glorified by the presence of Christ your Son, especially for Zion, Jerusalem, mother of all the churches. Remember our pure bishops who spread the word of truth, especially our blessed fathers, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Peshara Peter, our patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our bishop, 
and all the orders of the Church and those who serve her, we pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, our parents and all our brothers and sisters, those who are here praying with us, those who are not here, and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. Answer the petitions that will lead to their salvation. Remember those who have presented offerings upon your holy altar, those for whom they have been offered, those, have, those who have desired to make an off offering but were unable, those whom we have remembered, and those whom we have not. Reward them with the joy of your salvation and accept their offering upon your heavenly altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and clothe them, clothe them in your fear that they may stand for justice and establish peace. Remember all captives and prisoners, the sick, the suffering, and the afflicted, the needy, and those who labor in all walks of life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, the holy and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, St. John the Forerunner, St. Stephen the Archdeacon, and First Martyr, St. James the Brother of the Lord, St. Joseph, St. Jude, and St. Marin, and all the saints in your grace. Count us among them in the church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers who spread the word of truth in your holy church and preached your Son, Jesus Christ, to all nations. Through their prayers, grant peace to your church and confirm their teachings in our souls. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O God, of all spiritual and earthly beings, the faithful departed who have died in the true faith. Grant them rest and do not take their faults into account. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. But the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O 
O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, you have sanctified the offerings and the gifts presented to you and have perfected them by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O Holy Father, God of heaven, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Yes, O Lord our God, lead us not into temptation that we do not have the strength to endure, but when we are tempted, deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit, bow your heads before God in mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake in and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, we bow our heads before you, awaiting your abundant mercy. Send your blessings upon us and sanctify us, so that we may become worthy to share in your holy mysteries. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and his mercy and his love for all people. You are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy blood, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be the glory
again and again we thank you, O Lord, your raised glory to you, for giving us your glory to eat and your living blood to drink. The lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, O God the Father, for your great and indescribable love for all people. Since you have made us worthy to share in your holy banquet and in your Holy Spirit, do not forsake us for having received your holy mysteries, but keep us in the radiance of holiness and righteousness. With the saints, may we obtain a share in the heavenly reward through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Jesus, our Lord, protect, bless us, protect us, and guide us on the path of life. Favorably remember the departed of those who have shared in this Eucharist that was offered upon this divine altar. Grant protection to the living and bless them with hope. Through the prayers of the Virgin Mary and all the saints now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.